In our first story, local government minister Haji Ali Mahama has assured the Kufuado led administration is still committed to the election of Metropolitan Municipal and District Chief Executive as promised in his 2016 manifesto. Only this time, it may happen in 2021. Now, during the roadmap which will see the eventual election of the MMDCs for the first time between June and July 2021, the minister rejected suggestions. Government was dragging its feet over that campaign promise. Government has been widely criticized, particularly by the Progressive People's Party, which demanded the Ekufado administration takes immediate steps to trigger the election of MMDCs. However, Haji Ali Mahama says government will eventually fulfill the promise. So the election of, we're proposing that election of MMDC is, will be between June and July 2021, in line with the time frame we're provided under Article 2461. And then, hopefully, MMDCs, the new set of MD, MMDCs, elected through universal adult suffrage by their respective districts will be sworn in in August 2021. That's the roadmap. Members of the media, as I indicated, we are collaborating with so many organizations to help us in this regard. And the expected role of stakeholders the, the Minister of Local Government and Rural Development is shepherding the process. Attorney General will be drafting the bills. Electoral Commission will be organizing and implementing the referendum. National Commission for Civic Education will support public education and sensitization on the referendum before, and before the referendum and after the referendum on the elections. Expected role of non-state actors. Political parties are very key, but in our regional sensitization, we ensure that political parties participate and we ensure that they do group work and provide us their opinions in this regard. So political parties will be required and expected to conduct sensitization and education of members towards building consensus and getting the buy-in of their members for this process. The media to support in the orientation, sensitization, and education of citizens on this process. The objective and then the process. Civil society organization to provide advocacy for a yes vote at the referendum. And traditional authorities promoting the cause of the yes vote. And citizens voting at the referendum, and hopefully they will give us a yes vote. The Civil and Local Government Staff Association of Ghana, CLOSAC, is accusing the Finance Minister, Ken Oferiata, of recruiting political staff or appointees from outside the civil service to head various divisions or departments at the ministry. Well, CLOSAC says the act amounts to sidelining civil servants, which they will eventually not accept. If for Evans Chinri reports. Executive Secretary of Clocksack, Isaac Bampo Ado, warned the recruitment will mar the relationship between civil servants and government. Aware of our responsibility to the government as partners in development, it behooves Clocksack to bring up issues that are likely to mar the existing cordial relations. These issues border on excessive use of political power to obstruct laid down procedures and processes in appointments and administrative matters. There are situations where some ministers have assumed administrative responsibilities and signed letters to civil servants to proceed on leave. Where some of these civil servants were deemed lucky, they were sidelined by special assistance of these ministers to encumber their positions. The extreme case being the appointment of internal auditors by these affected ministers. This is a clear violation of procedures in the civil service. It is not uncommon to eventually blame civil servants for the lapses of these non career civil servants, often called special assistants. 
to forestall these developments, the affected minister should be called to order, especially the Minister of Finance, who has recruited staff outside the civil service to head various divisions or departments within the Ministry of Finance. Mr. Bampo also claimed personal information about their members is being leaked by the civil and local government services to private companies, which amounts to invasion of privacy. He described it as an unhealthy development which must cease. Another canker that is attacking the rules of efficiency within the government machinery is one-ton consultancies to private entities. Through such consultancies, private individuals and companies have got access to confidential information on workers within the civil service. Nowadays, it's a common phenomenon for our members to receive telephone calls from some companies or enterprises addressing them with their personal details. For example, this message has been received by many workers. Mr. Isaac Colley of Ministry of Labor Relations, are you looking for a loan? Call telephone number 0000. The caller has virtually got all the personal details which was supposed to be confidential information on the worker at his disposal. This is not a healthy development and could be the source of leakages in the civil and local government services. The government could bring this practice, the government could bring a stop to this practice if proper monitoring and evaluation of consultancies are carried out. After all, the cost of some of these consultancies are far higher than the recurrent expenditure of some of the ministries. We are aware that as of now, there are no committees or bodies assessing the effectiveness, impact, and relevance of consultancies procured in the civil service. We are calling on the government to initiate programs to assess the impact of both local and international consultancies. Another disturbing feature within the civil service is the practice of outsourcing core functions of institutions to private ent entities. It was envisaged that outsourcing some core functions would enhance the and improve performance. It was not intended to kill or make the original institution defunctional. Unfortunately, we are finding ourselves in a situation where more core functions of some institutions or departments are being given out and the institutions are gradually grinding, grinding to a halt. Clocksack has called on government to stop the leakages by ensuring proper monitoring of consultants who are engaged to do government business. If for Evans Chinui for Joy News. And let's turn attention to some mainstream party politics. And the newly elected Upper West Chairman of the governing New Patriotic Party says a defeat at the recent regional elections of persons seem to have the backing of the presidency is not a good omen for the ruling party. Well, S. B. Kamberi, who beats the aspirant, who is the acting regional minister, was head on tape canvassing support, says the defeat of the establishment candidate is a rejection of the government. The retired Saudi Arabia-based university lecturer turned politician, in an exclusive interview with Joy News Upper West Region correspondent Rafiq Salam, described as a case of death, the perceived support given to some aspirants adding the delegates were put off by the brazen attempt to buy delegates. Though S.B. Kangbere has won to a landslide victory and was elected as the upper West chairman of the governing new patriotic party, he is not happy with the way the government is interfering in the activities of the party, although he concedes it is the party that bears the government. Citing the recent regional executive elections, S.B. Kangbere observed that all aspirants purported to have been supported by the government in the election lost. He cites the case of the acting Apoist regional minister, Amid Chinia Isaku, who was heard on a secret recording attempting to influence the delegates to vote for another contender in the race, Hafiz bin Sali. If you say this is my team and they reject you, you that's why you ought to think twice before propagating that. Because if you keep doing that, and the people keep rejecting your team, eventually you yourself will be rejected. And you know, in this game, governments never win when they endorse somebody. If a government endorses you, I think you ought to cry. You should be weeping because it's a case of death. You never, you are not going to win. When you have nothing <laughs> uh, to offer, if you have no message, 
if you have no track record of goodness and you have no message for the future, what else do you resort to? But you want the power by all means, so you will resort to these things. The Internal Audit Agency says the country's health sector could be internally self-sufficient if revenue leakages are sealed. The Director of Operations of the Internal Audit Service, Isaac Amati, says poor record keeping and how revenue collection is handled at health facilities across Ghana gave room for manipulation of the system. Speaking at the inauguration of a five-member audit committee for the health sector in the Ashanti region, Mr. Amati noted the health sector could generate enough revenue for its development if it becomes more accountable. Lava Femsi Rasta Sasari Donko has more. The operations director of the internal audit agency, Isaac Amati, who swore in the five-member audit committee, observed lack of proper record keeping and poor revenue management systems is depriving the health sector of needed revenue. He called on the newly inaugurated committee to tighten controls to ensure good flow of revenue for development. Now, the major issue that normally gets, just like any other institutions in the country, is about how they are able to, they should be able to keep proper records in the, uh, in the way they carry out their work. We have poor record keeping and it's not helping very well in what we are supposed to do. And uh, secondly, we also want to look at uh, the revenue management system. When you go to most of the various uh, hospitals, you can see that uh, the way they document or they carry on the um, revenue collections and everything, give room for people to manipulate the system. And therefore, we entreat that they'll be able to uh, uh, improve upon their revenue management system so that they can be able to perform properly, get enough revenue to support. When we have enough revenue, then they can be able to get enough funds to be able to buy the equipment and other things that will help the hospital to be able to perform or better than we have now. There are a lot of people in the system who, uh, when they are given the necessary training in the health sector, will be able to perform very well. We know when the health service, the health sector is doing so well, then we'll be able to have a lot of people to have their health problems solved. Chairman of the committee, Suglu Abdullahi, pledged the committee's readiness to work. You see, uh, that is why the uh, act didn't say they should just bring anybody on board. We are all accountants. We all have weaknesses in our own financial management system. You see, it is easy when you're asked to assess somebody. But when you're asked to assess yourself, it is not that easy. So we are not to find faults. We are not to come and find out what weaknesses are. We are supposed to come, one, deal with any other issues that may come up, so that we advise, in some cases, ensure that those issues are brought to bear. Reporting for Joy News, Erastus Asaridonko, Kumasi. Ahead of the 2018 Basic Education Certificate Examination, Authorities in Bantama constituency are running pre-examination classes for some students in the area, all in a bid to prepare them adequately for the papers. The initiative is being spearheaded by the Bantama Education Committee. Nana Asensu Mensa has more in the following report. Officials explain performance of students has been on the decline in the past five years. This calls for action to halt the trend. Some participants shared their experience. It's very exciting and now I've learned that when you are writing B, when you are answering BC questions, you should be specific. So it has really helped me a lot. Maybe when you are answering questions, you should not just give any answer that you know, but you should take your time and solve the questions well. Make sure that you understand the question. That's what I learned. It helped me a lot. It helped me to understand the question that you will give us in the house we are to answer it. The way we should answer it. Member of Parliament for Bantima, Daniel Ochem Abwaji, is confident the intervention will yield positive results. Since the idea is to help and complement what the teachers have already done in various groups. So that when they go and sit in the exams and they are asking you to state, you state. When they ask you to define, you define. When they ask you to draw, you draw. 
You just don't go and when they ask you to uh, draw, you start defining something. You're losing marks. So we basically went through examination tactics, how to maximize your goals from BEC exams. This is just the beginning. You know, I mean, we're going to do a lot more things to help Bantu education, including vacation classes, remedial classes, uh, educational excursions to expose our children, even those who do very well and go to secondary school and do very well. We can also provide them opportunity to write American entrance exams and see if they can get scholarship to go. I've done it for a few people okay. and uh, they've gone. You know, all, uh, initially we might think it might be a brain, a brain what, uh, drain, but ultimately it's a brain gain. You know, I, I had opportunity, I was coached and uh, today I've become a blessing to Ghana. So having been uh, MP, I want to take that which we did when we were young. When we were young, we formed Bantuma Students Union. And one of the objectives was to help uh, GHS and SS people to be able to get educated and also, of course, clean the streets. Reporting for Joy News, Nana Asensu Mensa. Well, the MP there. Good morning uh, to him. Uh, Daniel Lachema Bwaji, Member of Parliament for Bantuma. And uh, that'll be it for the latest news update. We have to do a couple of um, the stories. We have only about three newspapers around here. And then we'll do more stories as we have them on my Joe Online and the rest of the other news portals. Stick and stay. We have great, exciting things for you. Myself, Mamabi Osobwadi, will be here shortly. Uh, enjoy this. We'll be right back.